Welcome, Welcome to, to Traverse, Traverse City. City. Just in case you aren't familiar with this cool little town, Traverse City is in northwestern Michigan. It's located on Grand Traverse Bay, which empties out into none other than Lake Michigan itself. Our current travel trajectory is taking us up to the UP, aka the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It's been on my bucket list since we started this Airstream adventure. But when we told other travel friends about our plans, they said we absolutely could not miss Traverse City. So we're excited to explore it with you today. But of course, the very first stop on our adventure today is coffee. If you've seen any of our other local adventures around the country, you know we are always in search for a great local coffee shop. This place had a Google review that said it was the best coffee they had ever had in their entire life. So we are really looking forward to this. Tis the season for pumpkin latte coffee. Yum. I am totally an avocado toast addict. And this is a good one. Now we're headed to our next adventure. Highly recommend stopping by here if you enjoy coffee. And if you happen to be here in the fall, well, pumpkin latte, I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. One of the main reasons we were told we could not miss Traverse City is because of its close proximity to arguably one of the most beautiful national parks in the U.S. 30 minutes just outside of Traverse City is Sleeping Bear Dunes. It's supposed to be beautiful, and step one on this adventure at this park is to climb the dune. In terms of difficulty of climb, we've climbed some pretty big dunes, specifically the tallest one in Northern Africa, Morocco. That was right before we started this YouTube channel. Yeah, and that was quite the adventure. But if we were comparing this to White Sands National Park, which... And this is bigger than White Sands. A little less sandy than the White Sands National Park, so I can't imagine that you'd be able to take a slide down this hill. Still a pretty cool adventure. We'll give you a view from the top. Now that we've climbed to the top of the dune, behind me you see Lake Glen, which is a teeny tiny little lake compared to what would happen if we would walk for another two hours past these dunes, some 3.5 odd miles all the way through the sand where we would finally reach Lake Michigan. But that's an out and back. It would take us four hours. So we don't have time to do that today, but this view is pretty spectacular little tumbleweeds everywhere and they're just, I mean, they're flying across these dunes. Check this out. The question is, who's faster? Tumbleweed or me? Well, let's find out. It really doesn't matter how many times we come to Michigan, I am always amazed at the fact that the Great Lakes really look more like oceans than lakes to me. They're just so vast. It looks a lot more treacherous going down the dune as opposed to coming up the dune. So that can only mean one thing. Yeah, he's a crazy person. I would sprain an ankle. Honestly, that was a blast and I highly recommend running down this dune. If you feel up for it, or if you're just crazy like me. There are tons of things to do at Sleeping Bear Dunes. After all, the 64 miles of curving sand shorelines are the largest dunes east of the Mississippi. You can hike, bike, fish, explore an island, and so much more. But one great thing about Sleeping Bear Dunes is it's super drivable if you only have one day to explore. One of the popular attractions at Sleeping Bear Dunes is the Pierce Stocking Scenic Drive. It's 7.4 miles long and goes through the dunes and the forests with a bunch of stops that you can see Lake Michigan as well as the other surrounding bodies of water. It's a really pretty drive. here if you're coming 
coming on a windy day and you're visiting dunes, make sure you bring glasses because the wind is kicking up quite a bit of sand and I'm really regretting not having glasses right now. I'm gonna add to that, I mentioned glasses with long pants and long sleeves. The sand feels like you're getting hit with like little BBs. It's blowing pretty hard right now. But I imagine the view is gonna be well worth it. It feels like little stingers. I know, they're like this sand is just like pelting you at high speeds. It's really windy today. I can't even see anymore. I've got so much sand in my eyes. craziness but the view the view is spectacular this was a very good example of the difference between what you find online you're looking at places just imagine you go online you google something you see these amazing views picturesque locations you think it's perfect but in reality it isn't always so perfect and this was a perfect example it's all about learning to have fun and enjoy it, no matter the circumstance. Now that we are officially windblown, it's time to grab some lunch. And for that, we're headed back to downtown Traverse City. For lunch, we're headed back to Front Street, which is known for having tons of local shops, restaurants, bars to explore and eat. And our friend, who actually is from here in Michigan, told us about Mama Lou's taco shop that's known for gourmet tacos, savory sauces, and of course, delicious margaritas. Our server said that the coconut margarita was his favorite and it's not only unique, but delicious. Not too sweet and just coconut. Gourmet tacos. If that doesn't make you want tacos for your next meal, there may be something wrong with you. <laughs> Only teasing. But seriously, Mama Lou's is a must visit when in Traverse City. When you come to Traverse City, Michigan, you'll hear a lot about the Michigan 22. It's a scenic highway with beautiful cliffs and drop-offs and views of the lakes. It's closer to sleeping bare dunes. But one of the lesser knowns and one of the locals' favorite highways and scenic routes is actually M37. And that's what we're taking now to head to our next destination. Welcome to Mission Point Lighthouse. We're 17 miles north of Traverse City. The lighthouse was built in 1870, and before it was here, it was just wooded peninsula. Men came, chopped down all the trees, and actually built the lighthouse out of the wood from the property. Today, it's very famous for sitting on the 45th parallel, which is exactly halfway between the equator and the North Pole. But as you can see, it's absolutely breathtaking. Here's a little secret. If you walk down to the beach from the lighthouse and take a right, just a few steps away, there's a swing set. Yep, this is super fun. After visiting the lighthouse, it was time to find something else the Traverse City area is famous for. Did we mention Traverse City has 40 wineries. Obviously, we had to check one of those out. 
wine time. I'll take the next two. This winery is called Chateau Chantel, and as most of the wineries here in this region, they're known for their Rieslings, which Daniel got, but they're also known for things that incorporate cherries because Traverse City is actually the cherry capital of the world. Cheers to that. Mmm. Cherry sparkles. wetting our palates with the taste of cherries at the winery, we decided that we might as well get a full dose of cherries since we are in the cherry capital of the world. So of course, we found a local business to do that at. <laughs> Welcome to Cherry Heaven. Only picking a few is going to be very difficult. Cherry stuff secured. So we can take this back home to the Airstream tonight and enjoy a late night cherry snack. It's around beer 30, so we're gonna check out a cool local brewery. The place we're taking you tonight is called Seven Monks, and USA Today rated it as one of the top 10 beer bars in the USA. Let's check it out. So I went with a sour. So it's lime, matcha, passion fruit, and vanilla. I'm pretty pumped about this. If you know Belgian beer, then you know what this is. And we haven't had this since pre, you know what, over in Belgium. So I'm pretty excited about seeing this. Okay, best beer bar we have been to in quite a while, but it's really hard to be an evening in the Airstream. So, let's head that way. Perfect camping wine glass. And it's pretty good. I agree. I like it. It's not too sweet. No. Smooth. A little bit tart, kind of like a cherry, but still has a nice finish. It's a win. You'll never get to experience things like cherry wine if you don't wander local. So. Make sure to wander local this week, my friends. As you know, it's good for the soul. Cheers.